going to show you how to make wooden mushrooms that you can use in your garden or put in plant pots around the house. I'm using a branch from a piece of crack willow. Crack willow often falls down by the sides of riverbanks so it's quite easy to prune off the end of a branch. And it's easy to carve simple shapes like mushrooms, though it's not good for finer detail. I'm going to start the carving of these mushrooms using an axe because it's a lot quicker to rough out the mushroom shape. You can also do it just with a knife, but I need to get a few of these made before Mother's Day, so I'm using an axe because it's a little bit quicker. And then I'm going to put in a little line which will mark where the top of the mushroom goes using a saw. This is just a little pruning saw I've got. And I'm only going in a few millimetres all the way around the circumference of the branch. I always carry a little pruning saw around with me on walks. And it's ever so useful when you find a fallen branch or a nice bit of wood. This is a really sharp little axe so it's great for roughing out the shapes of things I want to carve. I'm making lots of little cuts just down the length of the branch and this means that when I come to chop down some slices they'll come off nice and smoothly and the axe won't get stuck and split the wood. Just a few little chops in and then you can take off a nice thick slice of wood. Now I could do this with a knife but it will take me a little bit longer. And I'm taking off wood all the way around and this is forming the stem of the mushroom with the end being the cup. I do find it easy to get carried away at this point because it's quite soothing and relaxing just chopping away and taking little bits off with an axe. But if you take off too much, the top of the mushroom will just pop off. I've done that with a couple of sticks. And I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit with a knife now. I don't need to make it too neat. I will sound it a little bit, but I quite like the knife marks that are left behind. Then I need to take off this little bit of bark around the top of the mushroom. I'll come back to shaping the mushroom head once I've sawn it off from the main branch and it's a little bit easier to hold. At this point I saw the mushroom off so it's a little bit easier to hold and I can put some more detail in around the head of the mushroom. These mushrooms are all about 11 to 15 centimetres long and about three centimetres in width at the widest points. I like to do lots of little cuts on the mushroom top because when we come to paint these with the milk paints we'll be putting on different colours in layers so that we can get the effect of white patches across the top of the mushroom when we sand it down. All these little bumps are going to look great once they're sanded. To make the gills I'm going to use a really fine chisel and going from the outside of the cup towards the base just cut out little grooves all the way around. With a really freshly cut bit of crack willow this will be ever so lovely to do and a bit like cutting into cheese. And it's also nice to do this outside and spend some time in the garden with the birds. When you finish carving your mushroom, 
you're ready to give it a paint. And I'm using old fashioned milk paints. These are lovely, they make a really thick emulsion and you just mix equal parts powder to water and then give them a really good mix and leave them to stand for a while before painting them on. And I'm painting a sort of brownish colour here, just deep into the valleys of each gill. These areas are going to be sanded off, so you should only see the paint right deep down in the little gullies. And that will give the effect of brown mushroom gills. It also means you don't have to be very good at painting, so just splitch the end of the paintbrush right in as far as you can get. And you can see the effect here. You don't really have to wait for that one to dry for too long before you move on to the next layer of paint and that's going to be white and you're going to paint the whole of the top white but leaving the underside the brown you've just painted. Again you really don't have to be an artist just splodge paint all over the top of the mushroom and then once you've done a full layer let that dry for a little while. Make a cup of tea and feed the birds. I find if it's quite thick it dries quite quickly between layers so after about half an hour it should be dry and you can paint on your second layer of white. Once I've got my two layers of white paint on, I'll leave them to dry for an hour or two, and when they're fully dry, I will paint over the red. Paint a good thick layer of red paint to cover all of the white. Let the paint dry again and do a final second coat of red. Again don't worry about being super neat because we're going to sand the tops down and that's when all those lovely little bumps and cuts you made earlier will start to shine through as a mushroom pattern. I let that red paint dry for at least half a day. You want it to be really well dry before you start with the sandpaper. Now I'm going to use a few different types of sandpaper to sand down the mushrooms and to bring out some of these paint effects. I'm starting with quite a coarse grained one that's pretty rough on the feel. I'm going to use some different grades of sandpaper here to bring out the different effects on the mushroom. I'm going to sand the stem down with quite a coarse grit. I'm going to start by sanding underneath the cup of the mushroom to bring out the gills. And then once I've sanded the edges there so you can just see the little stripes of brown, I'm going to sand the top of the mushroom. You really don't need to do very much sanding here at all before you start to see the pattern coming out. And 
you can see here that just with a bit of light sanding it's taken off those edges and you can see the white coming through. If you sand down a little bit further you start to get the wood colour coming through as well and that makes a lovely effect. And then on the stem I just give them a very light sanding with a medium grit sandpaper. And that's your little mushrooms made. And they're pretty lovely as they are, as little wooden ornaments. But I'm going to add a wire to the base of these so that they can go into soil or compost and stand up even in a little bit of wind. I'm moving outside again now to drill a hole in the base. And I'm not going to go very far in here, just about a centimetre and a half. And this is a six millimetre drill bit and it's got a nice little pointy bit at the end so I can easily find the middle. And that's how easy it is to drill them. Tip out the sawdust that's collected inside and then I'm going to make some twisty wire to go inside. This is 2.5mm diameter garden wire, it's PVC coated steel wire and I've just cut it into some lengths, they're about 15 to 20 centimetres long. Take off the plastic coating from around the top of about the first couple of centimetres. You can do this by just lightly running the scissors around the edge of the wire and then giving them a little tug. Then using a little pair of jewellery pliers, I'm going to try and make a short spiral out of the end and I'll screw that spiral into the hole we made with the mushroom. Don't worry about making a neat spiral, as long as it's a little bit like a screw shape, it'll sit well in the mushroom and hold itself in place. You might need to go back in and tighten it up a little bit if it's loose. You can screw the wire all the way inside the mushroom and that will actually hold it really firmly in place. If these are staying inside they don't really need much of an oil but for the ones I'm keeping inside I'm using some walnut oil and I will just rub this on the outside of the mushroom and it gives it a really lovely shiny finish and it smells really good too. Don't mind getting walnut oil on my hands but for the ones I'm putting outside I'm going to use linseed oil and I will use some kitchen paper to apply that. Linseed oil is a really nice oil to use for outdoor things and it's great for going over this old fashioned milk paint. Do make sure that you dispose of any rags or towels that you've used with linseed oil properly because they can catch fire by themselves, which I've never seen happen, but I did see it in an episode of It's Summer Murders I think. I've made so many of these little mushrooms and given them as gifts and I also have a lot dotted around the garden and in my plant pots in my house. They're really lovely and easy to make. They make a lovely gift. They would also look very beautiful at a wedding venue, either on table displays or perhaps marking out a walkway. They're so pretty and magical. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Take some time to yourself, make some stuff make some mess and don't worry if they don't work. The fun part is the making part. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more.